So I just finished up my first semester, first full semester at CUNY SPS, which is an online bachelor's program. They have master's program as well. So today I want to take some time to discuss the pros and cons of the program as far as what I've seen being in it for one full semester and two summer courses. I'm in my 30s, returning back to college after a couple of dropouts, and I am about to make two years married with my husband. Um, so I'm very grateful that there's a program that exists that I can do aside from my, my full-time job because for me, I've always had a hard time scheduling CUNY classes around jobs especially when I was doing my associate's degree. But that's essentially what we're gonna be talking about today. So if you're interested, then just keep on watching. So I took four classes, two of them were for my major, which is communications and media. Actually, wait, before we start about that, I do wanna say that CUNY's response to what's happening in Palestine is deeply disappointing. There's been a lot of protests, there's been a lot of censorship, um, and I think that's incredibly disappointing. CUNY represents one of the most diverse cities in the world, especially if you're focusing just on Queens, like ethnically, statistically, one of the most diverse places in the world and to see what they've been doing is embarrassing, it's shameful. I really wanted to get like this CUNY SPS sweater, like I wanted to represent and stuff and then after everything that's been happening, what they've been posting, some stuff that I saw on their LinkedIn back in October, that's disgusting. So just keep that in mind, it's kind of tainted my view a little bit of the school that I'm attending. <laughs> back to what I was saying, I was taking two communication classes and two disability studies classes because I am minoring in disability studies and honestly, I'll be honest with you, those are my favorite classes this semester. They were super interesting. I learned so much. I really loved my professors. I loved the assignments that they were giving us. So let's start with the pros. The pros is I do think CUNY SBS tries their best to create a sense of community with its students. Remember this is all online based, at least the program that I'm in, so you don't really meet anyone. They do a lot of like Zoom parties, like, and I didn't attend any of these, but they do like, they did like a Halloween costume party on Zoom, and I think there was an in-person one too that was optional. Um, as long as you have your ID card which I never ended up going to make because you have to like it's a very informal way of getting it like I mean no it's formal like you have to make an appointment or do something but like they just hand you a random email I would have liked it if it had been like a scheduled thing during orientation week but I guess not everyone lives in New York City does everyone live in I don't know whatever point is zoom parties and in-person parties occasionally like celebrating Halloween or the holidays or Thanksgiving so I think that's kind of cute you know there's a sense of like they tried to to foster a sense of community and kind of interacting with your fellow peers. The semester started August 25th and then in September there was like a club week where they had a bunch of Zoom calls, like a whole schedule out and you could visit, attend an information session for whatever club you were thinking of joining. So I went to the Museum Studies Club and they were having issues. They had a Google Doc that you had to put your email in just so they could get back in contact with you and some of us were not able to because it didn't allow anyone to edit the document like there was something wrong with the settings so they're like don't worry we were keeping track of everyone who attended and then I never heard back so I'm not sure if the, <laughs> if the museum studies club ended up having a bunch of sessions and I just didn't realize because they must not have gotten my information down or if they just didn't follow up with the sessions because a lot of the people in the museum studies club when I attended were already in their masters during the museum masters program it's so annoying that very few schools offer museum studies in the um, undergrad level. For all I know, they could have been having a bunch of club meetings and I just ended up missing out. So what I don't like about CUNY SPS is that most of it is done through CUNY Blackboard and if you've ever gone to CUNY, any CUNY school, you know, Blackboard is just clunky, it's out of date, I think it's just so boring and hard to do any little simple task like I use it on Chrome right and I can't you can't copy and paste like when you're on a discussion board or when you're writing like an essay instead of uh inserting the document sometimes professors like for you to just copy and paste it into the actual thing I don't know if I'm making any sense here it's gonna be really hard for me to grab any additional screenshots of what I'm talking about because my semester just ended and grades are coming in which I'll talk about in a second but basically it's just like it won't let you do simple things like copy and paste you have to kind of use the keyboard shortcuts and I don't know what it is like I swear like my shortcuts work when I'm using Final Cut Pro or when I'm doing other things but when I'm doing school activities I can't it, it's so annoying to just copy and paste it like I just want to be able to double click and paste it 
but instead I have to like do this at the right time and sometimes this isn't post. That's my only gripe and I'm pretty sure earlier in the semester we got an email saying that they were gonna finally like launch a new type of interface instead of using CUNY Blackboard. I forgot what it was. If I could find that email, I'm that would be cool. Like if we could get a new interface that's nice and smooth and just more, even our pixelized like little icons, like the dimensions they give you for CUNY Blackboard when you're on the discussion boards with your peers, you can upload a picture. That was an assignment for one of my classes was, hey, step one, make sure you put a picture of yourself up so that we can feel like we're talking to each other. I don't know. And the dimensions are so like grainy and weird. Because everything's on Blackboard, I think it's a little boring. I will say I know a lot of these professors are professors on CUNY SBS but as well as in person so I know they have a lot on their plate but I feel like some of them just reuse a lot of their work from previous years because sometimes it'll say 2021 instead of 2020 three get it that information probably hasn't changed however it's a little annoying sometimes because sometimes there'll be things that don't pertain to us for example in one of my disability classes it'll be like the objectives for the week it'd say hey make sure you look at this week's lecture and there actually wasn't a lecture but the professor just didn't go back to remove that portion or in one of my other disability classes there was like a lecture based video where the professor filmed herself and gave like a, an hour lecture on disability history like a certain time period and that was super interesting i loved it but it was clearly filmed in 2021 because she was talking about it or not even 2021 maybe january of 2022 but she was saying all these dates we're taking it in the fall and she's saying all of these spring dates and it wasn't obviously correlating with where we were at in our syllabus so i feel like the professor could have easily just you know edit that part out and upload it again but sometimes they don't do that they're just reusing all the material and in some cases i think it could be confusing to students there's always like a discussion board q a section where students can ask general questions that the professor can answer or your fellow peers and a lot of times that was a question like hey where's the lecture it says there's a lecture and there's no lecture and the professor would be like yeah there's no lecture for this unit if professors went that extra mile right before the semester started to just eliminate things that are not relevant that would be very helpful also in a lot of my communication classes when you're doing kind of basic level 100 classes there's a lot of like older statistics like if you're talking about social media and the history of social media platforms you know you end up like the first couple weeks reading a lot about facebook and reading a lot of old like articles and scholarly sources about how Facebook is at the top of its game and that stuff's just irrelevant but you still have to write a discussion board question and like answering about how groundbreaking Facebook is and it's not present tense technically it's past tense but it's just annoying when you have a couple weeks worth of just talking about Facebook and talking about you know I mean I'm not trying to discredit anything Facebook did or accomplished I was never a Facebook user back in the day but it's just like a little annoying when you have so many units with topics that are so out of date. I don't think I'm explaining that properly, but yeah, I don't know. It's just something I noticed that happens a lot. I'm using this palette and I think my makeup is a little too intense right now and my battery is dying. Wow. Okay, my camera's charged now and I forgot what I was saying, but I'm going to do my eyeliner. Junior SBS has a lot of older students, older or straight out of high school students, which is an interesting combination. So I feel like sometimes you get nervous that you're missing something that you're not realizing it. That's just kind of getting lost. So the fact that it says watch your lecture for unit 5, and it said that for multiple weeks at the time that I'm filming this, it's the last day for professors to submit their grades. Speaking of grades, let's go over what I got in most of my classes. Still waiting on the results for my Disabilities 200 class. That's another thing, homework is usually consists of essays or discussion board questions and you have to respond critically to two classmates which i hate that part i hate that part so much because sometimes there's just not anything to say other than yeah i agree with you great post you know but obviously you can't just write that a lot of professors have a rubric for what they're looking for in your responses to others there's also quizzes or like little tests that are true or false and the good thing about them is that you get your answers or your score to that test or quiz immediately after you finish it the problem is a lot of teachers or one of mine in particular did a lot of true or false questions and they were incredibly tricky i definitely lost a couple points with questions that i don't think really show that i know the material or not but let me explain after i do this eye for my disability classes in particular sometimes they, you would have the assignment of looking at episode of a show that portrays disability whether it's in a positive light controversial light you had to look at that video or episode and analyze it critically and answer a couple questions and do the quiz so for one of them it was a reality show from lifetime i think about six women who are in wheelchairs except they're in wheelchairs they've all been paralyzed due to different 
events in their lives and it's actually a super interesting show and you kind of see them navigating through life having fun but also dealing with the discrimination of a society that doesn't really take accessibility seriously but one of the questions was true or false and it was like true or false in this show called let's say wheels i don't remember what the reality show is called all five leads are paralyzed so i was like oh okay it's a trick question i rewatched the episode just to make sure that they're all paralyzed and uh, there's different levels of disability right so i wanted to double check if that portion of the question was right because that's all i thought that was the focus but really it's false not because they're not all paralyzed but it's false because there's six women and not five women i got that question wrong and i just feel like that's so silly because this is a show that has multiple seasons i don't know like i'm not looking at the number of people i'm looking at making sure that yes they're all paralyzed like that's the disability we're focused on and how they got there is just a different journey so yeah i would lose points for questions like that all the time where i it wasn't a clear accurate representation of whether or not i obtained or retained any information from what i was learning it was more more so you're trying to trick us you're trying to be like aha and there was a lot of that from a specific teacher even though i really enjoyed her course i thought that was really annoying dreaded taking those quizzes and i was trying to be extra careful reading them and then little things like just little tweaks would end up having me lose points but i did get an a in that class so let's let's look at my phone and then i'll do my mascara still waiting for one of my classes but maybe by now she's updated it the class that i was telling you about that i was having those issues is disability and embodiment it's 201 class and I got an A. Woo. So for my social media class, which we're going to get into my social media classes in a second, I got an A. That was the hardest class that I took this semester. I did not think I was going to get an A because that professor is super strict. So sometimes you get professors that are more laid back and they're like, and then there's some professors where like, there's no extra credit, there's no neatnesses, there's no exceptions. The professor for my social media class, I don't want to say his name because he has a really, really low rating on Rate My Professor, but he gave me an A. I, I did it. I don't know how I did it, but I did it. It was an interesting class, though. I will say that. It's like the history of social media. And that sounds really easy. Our final project was the research project. And then it was a lot of essays and stuff. And he's very critical on the grammar, on how you're structuring your essays. So it's something where you, it really helps to look at the rubric. And I never did that. Up until the semester, how I got away with never looking at rubrics and just going off. I don't even know. Another thing about Rate My Professor, when I registered for my classes, a lot of times the professors weren't listed on the actual platform. I will say registering for CUNY SPS classes is a lot easier than registering for classes when I was at Hunter, when I was at BMCC. I mean, there's just a lot less competition with CUNY SPS. Like, there's more room for everyone. And in fact, it does kind of get tricky, though, because there have been times where I got emails saying, like, being like, hey, you should register for this class because if there's not enough people, then they're going to have to cancel the class. That didn't happen with any of my classes, thankfully, but I, I think that's a little concerning. Like, I think that depends on your major and what topic that is, but at least it is a lot less stressful registering for classes. But like I said, the professor information isn't always there. Sometimes it gets added in later. So by the time that my professors were assigned to the classes that I was taking, I'm pretty sure they already know who it is. They just don't put it up. So by the time that I saw the ratings of some of my professors, I got a little nervous. I did. <laughs> I did. I did. And then the other class that I took was the writing for digital media class. And I got an A as well. That one was really fun because you had a lot of fun assignments. Because I do YouTube, I'm very lucky that I'm already familiar with like audio and filming, editing, because there were a lot of assignments that required that, like filming your own podcast and recording it and then submitting a link and having everyone watch it, creating a viral video, which mine definitely didn't go viral. I think that was fun. It was interesting. We did a lot of like news articles, learned the structure of different kinds of articles and stuff like that. I thought that was cool. So the only one I'm waiting for is the Disabilities 200 class, which is Disability and Society. That one was pretty easy and again, really cool. I loved when the professor had those lectures that I was telling you about where she's like talking to the camera and stuff. That was a lot of fun. I really wish more professors would do that. I mean, I'm sure that's a lot more work for them, but it was so fun to just hear her and also being able to pause. So it was like a normal lecture from like back in the day when I was in a physical school, but also easier because I could pause it and give myself time to write my notes and stuff like that. So moving forward, the video is getting pretty long, so I'm going to do a separate video on what my next classes are going to be, but I am taking four classes. My financial aid is running out. I got an email talking about it saying that that's it. I've reached my lifetime eligibility. <laughs> so um, stressful, absolutely stressful. If you have any questions about CUNY SBS, let me know. Let me know how you're doing. Are you in a CUNY school? I would love to hear from you if you made it to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And until next time, bye.